Welcome back. The Forest of Moor is up next and we will face some difficulties in that area. Although the game is supposed to get uh, progressively harder as it goes on, isn't it? So, to reach a moor from Guido's Cave there are a couple paths. You can take the lazy path or the speedrun path that is only a second faster and it requires some modicum of thought, but I am going to show you both paths and uh, you do you. Okay, for the lazy path you want to go down and then to the right. And that's it. <laughs> Here you go Moor, you just enter this uh, crack uh, and uh, emerge from this tile and you wind up at the lake next to the village and you can enter the forest of Moor from over here. The speedrun path is more nuanced and involves uh, knowing the land masses. So uh, go to the west, uh, then touch these rocks, uh, keep going up and stay close to the continent and uh, after the, the trench from this coral, we want to start counting how many corals we see. So keep uh, swimming to the west. And then we have one, two, and then three corals. On the third coral, you want to go one tile to the left, and then swim south. And this will put you on the edge of the continent of Moor. And over here on these rocks, we're close. Uh, you want to hug the corner, go to the right. And we end up on the same spot as the other pad. Trick here, but faster. Okay, uh, we are going to enter the forest of Moor directly and skip the village entirely. It has some very nice tech, uh, so some really advanced uh, spells. Uh, the third tier um, Black Magic spells, uh, Thundaga, Blissaga, Firaga, although we have Giltos, so there is no need for that. Uh, you can find Heizga, um, but we are about to get running shoes. Uh, and we have a mix uh, to cover for needs anyway. Like, the thing is, uh, the things in Moor are really good. They are very nice, uh, but it doesn't offer a return on investment uh, compared to other things we can employ in the route. So, eh. For some more it is. Uh, as we enter the dungeon, we have to set up. Okay. So, we're going to do some grinding here, but just kill encounters on the way because the rooms are really big and you are bound to battle a thousand things anyway. We want to hit level 17 for everybody as well as 12 AP. The, the, those are your benchmarks. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, Giltos is based on levels, so having these extra levels will make a couple of boss battles go smoother. In particular, except on his castle um, and Lion and the Gargoyles. Uh, so, it just makes things uh, smoother. The 12 AP are because... Uh, you might have noticed that during World 2 our boss setups weren't very optimized. Like, we could have taken out the thief to work on AP for some people, but we didn't bother for the sake of keeping menus simple. So, while grinding for the experience we need anyway, we're also going to finish up uh, some commands uh, for people that need them. In particular, I keep working on Mix for Faris as well as uh, Giltos for Galuf. So, um, just something to watch out for here on this dungeon. Well, first off, we gotta pull ba Galuf back on his feet. He's been dead since the big boat. And then uh, turn him into a samurai, no secondary command, and uh, set up the bone mail and the coronet, the heavy equipment, so the other people can set up a speed gear through optimize. Um, you can also optimize and remove the dancing dagger, but we want to pass that on to Lena. But it is of utmost importance that Galuf has the bone mail, because uh, that sets the undead flag, and it is a requirement for the exit skip at the Elder Tree. So. This is something you always want for this segment, regardless of the route you're using. Galuf has to have the bomb mail. Uh, next, uh, Lena. Uh, set up Giltos. She just got that on Atomos. Uh, we will use this to quickly snipe enemies on the forest uh, before they even get a chance to attack uh, with the uh, agility that comes from Thieves. And uh, optimize. And with the Dancing Dagger, Lena has plus 3 agility. This is enough uh, to have a couple points over Bartz, who has uh, 43 right now, even with the Greenberry and the Stealth Row. And this guarantees that Bartz will not queue up a turn before Lena um, attacks, so that uh, you can use this kill things and be done with it without having to defend Bartz's turn. So use a minor optimization. And then Faris has, becomes a chemist to keep working on uh, Mix, of course, uh, set up Giltos uh, for the damage and uh, optimize for some armor. Do know that everybody here has armor set up. 
absolutely everybody. Um, because the Seal Guardians, the boss of this area, will open up with a barrage of physical attacks and we have to tank it out. They are very fast, so they will get a chance to attack before we do anything and we have to ensure that our commands go off, so we have to tank it out. But um, uh, sometimes uh, the crystals can gang up on the same character and they will die anyway, so <laughs> there is not a whole lot to do there other than uh, heal up and try again. But that is extremely rare, they have to literally attack the same character four times. Uh, anyway, now for the forest. Uh, to start off the dungeon here, you want to approach this event tile with the elder branch in uh, our hands. Uh, it just takes care of opening up uh, the bushes for us and we can continue through the dungeon. Naturally, that is an event tile. And for the step row, we want to walk over it. So after the cutscene, you go up and then uh, it doesn't matter how you walk through this room as long as it's uh, generally to the right. So I just like uh, approaching the bushes here. Which is what my um, images uh, reference. But we are going to kill most of the randos here, barring a couple encounters. Uh, used to hear those benchmarks. And you, <laughs> you also want to be careful about the random drops here because uh, the mini mages can drop tricorns. They are not too catastrophic for inventory because I am pretty sure that the Green Berets uh, have better defense than them. But um, you still want to, to drop them just in case. Uh, of equipment weight and whatnot, and uh, we just keep going, get another encounter over here. Also destroy with Giltos, uh, simple and easy. It doesn't matter what you kill as long as you hit the thresholds, level 17 and 12 AP. You can even overshoot that. And now here we have uh, the three holes. Uh, uh, there are some trunks that open up a path for you if you interact with the hole in them, but uh, for the step route, the peculiarity with this is that they have uh, two event tiles in front of them instead of the standard one event tile. Because this tile right here will become a uh, transition into another room, and then you have the tile in front of the tree hole itself uh, that is uh, the lever, so to speak, uh, to open up the pathway below the roots. So for this uh, entire dungeon, uh, for these instances where you have a tree hole, you want to walk over the two event tiles in front of them to keep the step route consistent. Yeah, so now we go below, take the hidden path, and keep on advancing. We kill another round here. This dungeon sits at a weird spot where the enemies still have enough health that we can destroy them with Yiltos, uh, but... Um, they offer really good rewards in experience and AP, so this is a great place for grinding. I usually use this area to catch up on Forio Fiesta. <laughs> Uh, so, another tree hole. You want a couple tiles before going in there. But make sure to walk over the two event tiles in front of the tree hole. I cannot stress that enough. And this room we take uh, four steps. Yep. And then uh, on this room you want to go over this tree and then uh, hug it. Keep going up. Have an encounter with a worm. This guy has too much HP so he's not good for grinding. And then next to this uh, tree. We we'll keep going up and uh, into the fire cutscene. You will have to practice that room, it's a little tricky um, to navigate because the canopy is all over covering your uh, side. But yeah, Xdev just goes insane and burns down the forest, even though this is technically his cradle, I guess. Uh, so, now this internal timer to the bottom right, the um, Amugel will pop up when that hits zero and save us. But uh, the danger rate will advance on this cutscene, even though no encounters can happen. So first off, you want to grab the Aegis Shield for some extra steps. Um, the extra interaction doesn't matter. Couple of steps, and then you want to stop on this uh, tile here, because this is where the hole will appear alongside uh, the tile on its left. So grab the Aegis Shield they use for the uh, extra steps uh, primarily, and a uh, couple of steps. Go above the hole. And down we go! Now here uh, we have another event. We have to wait 20 seconds until the mobile decides to move off the way. And unfortunately, I have no clue how to manipulate this guy, but sometimes the mobile will just get stuck in front of the door. And you just have to push into him until he moves off the way. And this is, has been a problem that has... Uh, tainted Final Fantasy V SP running since the beginning of Mankind, because <laughs> just look at this! He just won't move off the way, like, what can I do? But, 
unfortunately uh, i guess i've been too lazy about, uh, to find a solution about it but it's just something that happens sometimes the room that there doesn't advance the danger rate and you could take the healing of spring but you want uh, to heal up after our final level we haven't hit level 17 yet just to ensure our safety on the steel guardians anyway here we go below the tree and da, 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 we'll get an encounter one time before the bush final encounter we kill this is going to give us the um, Resources we are looking for. Okay, another good thing here. And then one final encounter before uh, ending this app. And uh, you have to escape from this encounter. Well, not have, but uh, killing it wouldn't provide anything for the route, so it's just a slower to kill it. And your success rate is guaranteed at any rate. And uh, before entering the Elder Tree, we take six steps so over here. There is a wall here, even though it doesn't look like it. There's a corner blocking your path, so. Uh, you can use that uh, to get a safe reference and uh, before interacting well well going uh, down further in the elder tree you want to go into your inventory heal up the party with high potions and now we should be ready okay the civil guardians um the way these guys work is that they have uh, s sevens so for hp yeah 7,777 HP. Right now, they are only going to spam physical attacks, but when they go below 3,000 health, they spam AoE spells that will murder you. They are extremely strong, and uh, you have no hope of surviving them. So the strat here is uh, killing all of the Seal Guardians on the same volley of guild tosses uh, to prevent uh, this uh, change in the AI. So the Seal Guardians will have... Uh, to attack you uh, first. They will launch uh, physical attacks on the entire party. And uh, in the meanwhile, Lena is going to heal us, right? So here's where you gotta pay attention to your health, because if uh, in the unfortunate scenario where uh, Faris gets uh, targeted four times in a row, which can happen, uh, she might die, and uh, you will have to delay the battle and revive her for the AP, because she cannot miss the AP from this battle. But that is very rare, and um, usually doesn't happen. If uh, the Seal Guardians uh, hit a Galuf once, uh, your safety on the battle is guaranteed. Nothing will happen. Galuf cannot die, the bomb gives him too much defense. Um, so, Giltos with Lena, and where Barsi's Strong comes up, you want to mix uh, Samson's power. You mix a Revivify plus an Antidote, it results in uh, uh, poor man's Dragon Power that boosts level by 10. But this is enough to give us uh, the damage range we're looking for to kill the Seal Guardians uh, on the same attack. So after they are done attacking you, now we are safe from uh, the AI switch for the next couple guild tosses, and that is enough to end the battle. So the key here is uh, killing them all after they attack. And that guarantees your safety. So 15 AP, now we get escape for uh, Lena, which will help on Exodus Castle. Guild toss for Galuf, and uh, Faris is not quite done with the mix yet, she will finish that on Exodus Castle. But she should be 6 AP away from the command. And uh, the grinding will be done then. So here we have Excel. Oh no, it turns out that he wanted us to do this all along. I don't know, dude. But now we have the dramatic battle of Final Fantasy V. Excel is all about battle against uh, Galuf. An overwhelming foe for sure. But this battle is coded to prevent you from dying, so <laughs> the strat here is going into your inventory. With bomb mail we can uh, kill Galuf automatically, and then uh, we game over, technically, but the game is not supposed to handle like game over on the other scenario, because it's coded to prevent the Galuf from dying. So normally uh, you have to do a lot of damage to exit through guilt or whatever, and uh, get some dialogue, see his spell animations, it takes forever. Uh, but we can do this loophole through the bomb mail to kill us. And there goes Alf. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, if you have not played Final Fantasy V before, our boy Galuf uh, perishes in battle. That was just too much. Uh, the extra healing items uh, do, don't do him any favors while having the bomb mail equipped. Uh, but uh, there he goes. So after the cuts in his own, Kara grieves for Galuf. Uh, don't talk with her, just let her um, <laughs> uh, sleep on the ground. I am being very insensitive right now, I am sorry. But uh, you get an internal timer, tick, 
30 seconds of waiting and you just have to sit tight until all of that uh, passes. Sometimes I like going around the room uh, and stuff, <laughs> just uh, to wait it out. So anyway, uh, Galuf is gone and then Kara replaces uh, uh, him as a party member. And something I sort of gloss over in regards to basic mechanics. Uh, all your characters have innate stat bonuses. So some of your characters are better at certain things. For example, Barcia has a lot of strength, so he's better at physical job classes. Lena has a lot of magic power, which is how we managed to pull off the time magic strats, uh, the time mesh strats uh, during Liquid Flame. The others just couldn't pull the same uh, magic multipliers due to the lack of uh, magic power. But it wasn't. But this was never really relevant until now, when Kara joins the party. Because uh, she has much more different stats uh, than Galuf, uh, primarily the agility. She's now the fastest party member on uh, uh, our side, so she outpaces the Faris now, and that's just something to keep in mind for our generalized turn order in case they share your classes and whatnot. Uh, the turn order is now Kara, Faris, Lena, Bartz. Bartz now became the slowest party member. So yeah. She also inherits all of Galuf's skills, so no need to worry about uh, losing anything. She's basically Galuf 2.0, way better because of the agility, so we can do more... Uh, we can do fancier battle strategies with that. But yeah, that's it. Emotion and all aside, leaving the force of more, we want to be at 221 total steps.